Hi. Thank you so much for welcoming to this uh, beautiful and loving community. I'm really grateful to be here, Reverend Ahrens. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really a joy and an honor. And I was invited uh, to read the Gospel Luke, uh, the Gospel according to Luke 15. And uh, so I will, I will offer that to you with, with, with a few words of, of my own as well. Thank you again, Reverend Ahrens, for being a partner with us with Second Nurture. The literature is handed out to you if you want to take a look. Uh, I knew from the first time that we spoke that your values are not theoretical, but are very deeply and profoundly lived. And thank you for, offer, uh, for offering me this opportunity to read from your holy text. Um, I was discussing the story of the prodigal son with our colleague here, Sharon, Rabbi Sharon Mars. Uh, and she said, oh, that reminds me of the Midrash, the rabbinic story of the Bira Doleket, in which a traveler encountered a palace that was a light. The Hebrew for a light can be read as a palace being in flames or just kind of lit up, as if from a warm, welcoming hearth within. So thank you for this warm, welcoming hearth of First Church, and I hope I will do justice to this reading. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of property that will belong to me. So he divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. If I can pause in the gospel for a moment and refer to the Midrash, this is like interpreting the Bira Doleket as the castle burning, the palace burning. When our life is out of control, when the society around us is out of control and all is aflame, and we've experienced this sense on many levels over the past years. And like this traveler in the Midrash, we exclaim, surely there must be someone in charge of this burning world. Surely there must be someone who could put out the fire. As did, it seems, the story's prodigal son. We read, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Pausing again, here the Birado Leket, the palace aglow with the warm fire of family, love, and welcome. Almost. We continue, now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has, fill, has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, 
For all these years, I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I may celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. So stepping back for another moment, in this view we see two palaces, the upper palace where we find God who yearns for reunification that we, and that would turn our hearts and, and welcome us home. And then there's, there's the earthly palace, the, the place where the brother finds himself for this moment where we often find ourselves with smoke in our eyes, unable to find each other or the light. Sometimes we can hold our minds in both palaces, a world on fire and a world aglow with the light of the Holy One. When we see through the haze of the burning around us to the palace above, we can set our hearts to bridging those two worlds. This, perhaps, is what the father of both sons teaches. And we conclude this gospel reading, then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Your community is a palace aglow, a welcoming beacon to everyone. The father who welcomes his child with all that child's brokenness. And I'm here because you're doing that again with us at Second Nurture welcoming our organization so that you can increase the breadth and depth of the ways in which you already welcome and love. You may have read Reverend Aaron's beautiful description of what we are embarking on together. In this community, there are those who are either fostering, who have adopted from foster care, and we believe that there are those among you who have considered doing so but have not had the path forward, and we will help First Church to become this path. Families who foster, adopt, or just exploring the possibility will form a cohort together led by a Second Nurture Family Support Specialist that meets monthly, providing mutual support to one another. And because the cohort emerges from this beautiful community, these families have organic networks of support from the wider membership, which we at 2N helped to cultivate. And also there are three other Broad Street partners of faith that are, that are joining this. Temple Israel from Rabbi Sharon Mars, Temple Tifareth Israel, and uh, the Presbyter Amy Miracles Presbyterian Church. So think of us at Second Nurture as the switchboard operators who will connect you with each other in these communities with social service providers and other professional resources, as well as help organize the meaningful support this wider membership and the wider memberships can provide. So look out for announcements about uh, introductory sessions and join them, whatever your level of involvement might be. The prodigal son left a chaotic world and found a lit hearth of love and family. So many kids in Franklin County don't have that beacon, a light with love, to welcome them home. Perhaps that palace is your loving home, held in this loving community, perhaps from the haze of the burning around them, you will help children lift their eyes to the palace above so that they too can set their hearts to bridging the two worlds. I want to thank you so very much for inviting me, for welcoming me, and I'm going to